bureaus of missing persons in every city in the world list thousands of odd and unexplained disappearances. But in the literature of psychic phenomena, there are two sudden appearances that are perhaps as strange and as perplexing as anything that ever happened on this earth. One of them occurred in the town of Chico in California's Sacramento Valley. The date was March 17th, 1922. It began with something as commonplace and as ordinary as these pieces of granite, sandstone, marble, shale, quartz. Ordinary pieces of rock and stone. Or are they? Yes, sir, that'll be in this week's paper. We're printing it up tonight. Just as soon as... Just a minute, Mr. Chuck. Harry! You'll be sure to stand in the porch roof. Here they come again! Frank! 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 I guess that's it for today. Is he all right? Yeah, I think he's just knocked out. Like the others, they're warm. Right on schedule, three o'clock. We'd better get him over to Doc Stanley. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, Mr. Stroud, please forgive me. Uh, Mr. Stroud? How's Frank? He'll be all right. Harry, huh? have you told the marshal yet about what you did? Well, there's no sense getting him riled ahead of time. You know, when all those people start arriving in town, he's going to blow sky high, Harry. Joe Tomlinson's just worried about looking foolish in front of outsiders about not being able to stop this. Or not being able to find out who or what's been doing. Mm -hmm. All those big city newspaper people writing it up, we're going to look pretty foolish. Whole world's gonna have a great big horse laugh at us. Maybe. But maybe this is something important that the whole world ought to know about. Jenny, our business is news. However it turns out, it'll still be news. Are you gonna meet them? 2.30 tomorrow. Joe Tomlinson won't like it. Joe Tomlinson doesn't like anything. the place they come down, Mr. Cole? For the last three days, yes. But you still don't believe me, do you? Oh, I imagine there's some stones coming from somewhere. I just don't think you're foolish enough to believe there's anything strange about it. You think this is a hoax, too? Well, let's say I, I'll have to be shown. Folks in Los Angeles like to read about this sort of thing, so whatever happens, I'll write about it, but, but I'll write the truth, Mr. Cole. Mr. Cole. You've got a fine sense of theater. All the props in the right places at the right time. Listen to this, Bradley. Harry Call, editor, Chico Chronicle. Dear sir, this is to inform you that I am the one who's been causing the stones and rocks to fall on Chico. To prove it, I will make them fall again tomorrow at exactly three o'clock and exactly where they fell today. And since I have repealed the law of gravity, I will have some of them float down from the sky. And sign the ghost. <laughs> uh, it's rather amateur theatricals, I'm afraid, Mr. Call the ghost. 
In the past ten months, many people have come forward claiming to know who or what was responsible. Now, many of them were anonymous. Well, now you've got your answer. It's a ghost. I assume there are cranks all over the world, Mr. Towers, even in San Francisco. I merely thought as a newspaper man, gathering information on a story, you would be interested in seeing that note. Oh, I'm interested. I'm very interested, Mr. Call, to see just how far you'll go to try to sell us this bill of goods. I'm not sure how they do things in the big city. But here, while I try to approach gathering news with a healthy skepticism, I hope I do it without arrogance or a smart-alecky, know-it-all attitude. Very well put, Mr. Cork. Don't you think so, Towers? See, so you got visitors, Harry. Hi, Joe. It's the town marshal gentleman, Mr. Joseph Tomlinson. This is Mr. Towers of the San Francisco... Yeah, I know who they are. You don't seem very happy to see us here, Marshal. No, I'm not. I think this is strictly a local affair. It's nobody else's business. How do you know that, Marshal? What? Well, I mean, unless you know who or what is responsible, how do you know it is local? What else can it be? Well, I'm sure you've been trying to find out for the past ten months. Sure, naturally. Now, Chico isn't a very large town. If somebody is launching stones with some sort of catapult, I'm sure you'd have discovered him by now. If it's really happening. Don't you see, Bradley, it couldn't be anything else. There are no hills around here. Those stones come straight down from nowhere. Sure they do. Where's the highest spot in town, Marshal? The roof of Torrey's warehouse up on High Street. Can we go up there? Certainly. Well, that's where I want to be at 3 o'clock. With field glasses. That's Harry Call's place, huh? Yeah. And the stones have fallen there for the last three days, huh? Right in it. Mm -hmm. Well, they, they could easily have been thrown from here from, with some sort of machine. Couldn't they? Bradley, let me tell you something. For the last 10 months, those rocks have fallen just about every place in this town at all sorts of different hours, day and night. And plenty of those times, I've been right here with those glasses. But like Carl said, they always fall straight down. It's almost 3 o'clock, Mr. Towers. Uh -huh. Just a minute or so by my watch. Well, they at least come in under the porch roof. No, sir. This I want to see from beginning to end. There. There, Mr. Bradley, a little more to your left. Up there. They're falling from an empty sky. They're floating. this note, who signed himself the ghost, was never heard from again. However, a young man who had come to Chico ten months before, and who had been the subject of much conversation because of his odd behavior, disappeared suddenly on the same day. A nationwide search was made for him, but no trace of him or his invention was ever found. Who was he? Or perhaps, what was he? Because, from the New York Times, printed in 1878, 44 years before the barrage of rocks began over Chico. On the 29th of August, a great number of small fish fell from the sky on the town of Chico, California. Covering the roof of a store and falling in the streets over an area of several acres. 
they fell from a cloudless sky and were both fresh water and ocean varieties. And from the monthly weather review of March 1885, a large object of very hard material weighing several tons, but defying analysis, fell from the sky in the town of Chico, California. Now, was the ghost, whoever or whatever he was or is, responsible for all the strange goings on in the sky over Chico? It certainly would be fascinating to find out. 